All right, so I know there's been some talk on the message board uh, in the Facebook group about Access PDF, and I wanted to dispel a couple things. Um, Access PDF is really a tool designed to fix errors, but one of the things it does from the remediation standpoint is tables really well. And I, I thought I'd show you a quick sample of what it does, right? So this is a table very much like we've seen before where we've got these merged cells all over the place and some go all the way across and some are just a couple columns. For you to try to remediate this by hand, you have a couple of options, but we do know that if you just simply assign scope and span, that when you get down to a value like 530, you're going to hear Sacramento, low, system-wide, then urban, then rural, then small community, and then the, the levy set back, the row header, and then the value, because it stacks all of these header cells uh, on top of each other. It doesn't know how to uh, start one and or stop one and start the next one, right? So what do we normally do? We teach that we build the table differently. Now, whether that's by modifying the tag structure so that the TDs and TRs reflect this kind of left to right reading, or we go back and simplify our table, it's a lot of work. We've got to go into our TRs and TDs and start moving things around and maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. And then we use a program like uh, uh, Callus PDF Go HTML to check our work and see what that structure is. Well, one of the first things that we know is that we have the we have a previewer built into Access PDF, and I can come in here and see all of my cells and how they are associated with each other. All of the cells highlight, but what right what we're not seeing right now is any structure. There's no headings being highlighted when I get down to the data cells. So let's fix that. Right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to just to signify what are the header cells and what's the relationship. So let's go back up to our, our table. And it's really this easy. All I have to do is marquee around the data cells that I want. And these little icons appear and you can see some of them are uh, lines and some of them are asterisks. That just defines whether or not it's a column or row scope or whether a scope has been set at all. So once I've marqueed around these, I simply click once and look, it knew which columns go with which items and it gives me a little one to say one data, one header cell is associated with each of these cells. Then I click again, boom, two. Now all of these, these secondary headers are associated with these cells. And then three, system-wide and now system-wide. Just this section is associated with this data cell. And then all I have to do is repeat it for each of the sections. Now watch as I do it in sp at speed, right? I'm gonna click there, one, two, three, done. Click this, go back up, one, two, and then that's three. And if I want the row header to go in there as well, there's four, right? And I can come back in here and select these and go, yep, I want that row header in there as well, right? And here we go, add the row header. And you can see that that number four now is illustrated there. So each of these data cells has its own unique cell IDs. What we're doing here is a visual way to set, to set cell IDs. And how quick was that? Super quick. Our only extra step is that we need to come in here to these subcells and say, this is my parent, right? That these cells are my parent. And the same thing here, system-wide, right? We wanna make sure that management category and these other cells are a parent to system-wide, right? Other than that, we're done. All we have to do is keep doing the next row, right? So let's go down here. We've already done this set. Let's do our final set here. And we're gonna go up and go click, click, and then click on small community and click on our row header. And that did all of these rows plus the subtotal and the, um, the uh, capital total. And I'm done. I'm done with this table. And that took me, while I was explaining it, all of less than about three minutes to do. Imagine you had to go through the time and modify the tags tree and double check your work and figure out if it was right or not, right? And then the other thing is that we've got the pack three checker. Well, the, the pack three checker is built in to access PDF. So you can check it right from here. We've got some other stuff to do, but the idea here guys is guys is that this table is now remediated and will be voiced exactly correct when it comes to using JAWS or NVDA. And I didn't have to do any heavy lifting. 
I hope that answers some questions. If you want to know more about Access PDF, let me know. I'm not trying to turn this into a sales call, but I definitely want to refute the idea that Access PDF isn't worth it or that it's not a useful tool because there's a lot of things that it does really great. But if you're used to a remediation tool where you want to uh, edit your tags tree and move stuff around and maybe create things that weren't tagged already, that's not what Access PDF is for. So hopefully that dispelled some myths and uh, gave you guys some insight as to uh, a great feature inside Access PDF.